Welcome to the MLX 300 Advanced Debugging Training. This video presentation will explain the most common programming mistakes and how to detect and resolve the issues. The number one rule for MLX programming is to never disable a PLC run while an MLX command is executing. Wait until the AOI has completed. This can be determined by monitoring the status done bit or the STSDM bit. The motion commands are slightly different. They have both a status done bit and a status process complete bit, or STSPC. With these commands, the done bit indicates that the motion has been placed in the queue, and the process complete bit indicates the robot has reached the position. When the done bit comes on, this run can be disabled and the motion will still execute OK. However, there will be no feedback from the other status bits of this AOI, such as the alarm bit and the process complete bit. The PLC won't know when the robot reaches this position. And if there's an alarm, it won't be able to go back and view the ladder to determine which AOI had an error. Therefore, it's required that the run stays enabled until the robot reaches the position. A common mistake which could cause problems is to place a sensor input right before an MLX command. For example, you might want to make sure a pallet has moved into the correct location before a box is placed onto it. If the sensor has a weak signal and it flickers off and on for a short instant, the motion AOI will be commanded twice. Since the first execution was disabled before the required handshaking was completed, the instruction will be left in an indeterminate state. This will cause the software to lock up. The solution to this problem is to latch the sensor input when it is first detected, and then use this latch signal as a condition to command the motion. You will also need to unlatch this tag after it's been off for a certain period, but make sure the motion command is not being executed at that time. Sometimes it seems like it's a mystery why the software is not operating like it should. When this happens, the first thing you should check is whether or not an AOI name has been used more than once. This unique identifier cannot be used anywhere else in the ladder, even if it's on a run that will never be active. The reason for this is every AOI has a special enable false condition that resets its state whenever it's not enabled. This will prepare it for the next time it is called. If you use the same AOI name twice, it will attempt to execute the instruction in one location and attempt to reset the instruction in another location. This will lead to an unresponsive behavior from the system and the command buffer will fill up. An easy way to check for this potential problem is to right click on the AOI name and choose cross reference. You can see that the LM3, Linear Motion 3, is only used in one place. Now let's check all the commands in the LM array. Backspace over the 3 in the brackets and press Refresh. You can now see that there are many motion commands to find in this array. Let's sort them to make it easier to check for a double occurrence. Only look at the ones that are actual AOI commands. Some of them will be command status bits. Now you can see that LM27 was used twice, and this is causing the issue. To fix this, look for a number that's unused, like 28, and change one of these to that new number. This next topic is the most important, and it's one that many integrators have a difficult time debugging. After they investigate why a PLC ladder has locked up, they will discover that on a current program step, an AOI has been enabled, but it won't finish. At this point, many integrators will give up because they think there's something wrong with the MLX AOI. 
Almost every time this happens, it's not a problem with the current AOI. It's because the previous AOI was not programmed properly. More than likely, the previous AOI had its run disabled before it was done. The ladder shown below is from an actual integrator. This is the perfect example of the issue that many integrators encounter. I'd like to take you through the steps to debug this issue, because once you see the process, it can be easily debugged in the future. It's usually easy to see in the ladder where the logic has stopped. Just look for the current step number. For this ladder, the auto robot control was stopped on step 10. Note that the set frame shift command was enabled, but it's not completing. The most likely reason for this is a previous AOI command was disabled before it was finished. There are two options to find the previous AOI. The first option is to backtrack through the steps and determine the last MOX AOI that was commanded. This is the easiest option, but not when the latter is very complex or you're not familiar with the programming. I'm going to show you the process for the second option. You can look at the MLX tag array to determine the last command that was executed. Go to the internal data, write packet, and you will see there is a command that was requested but wasn't finished. You can tell it wasn't finished because the request bit is still on. Below that, the command type is 205. Each of the AOIs has a command type, and I created a table that shows a list of all the AOI command types. This will be useful for more efficient troubleshooting and it will be added to the next MOX 300 software manual. In this table, you'll see that command type 205 is assigned to the MOX robot select tool command. We need to find where this command is used in the ladder. You might need to search both the controller tags and the program tags, depending on how it was programmed. Sort the data column and search for all commands that are the MLX robot select tool type. For this ladder, there's only one. You can right click on this row and select cross reference. Now double click on the AOI name and it will take you right to the rung where this command is used. This robot startup step number 50 looks okay. Let's look at the step before this. The enable command is executed to turn off servo power. When it's complete, the next step will be to select a tool. When that's complete, it will go to step number 60. On this step, it's checking for the system state to be equal to 3. If you press the toggle documentation button, you will see that system state 3 is idle. The idle state means that the servo power is on and the robot is waiting for a motion command. When this is true, the robot ready to cycle signal will be latched on and the startup step will be set to zero. However, if you look at the lower branch on the left side of this rung, it's checking for the robot enable tag and the system state equal idle. If you scroll up, you can see that the robot enable tag had to be on to initiate the startup sequence. Therefore, as soon as the system state is idle or servo power on, the robot ready to cycle tag gets latched and the startup step gets set to zero. Reviewing the process again, you can see that on step 40, the enable command was executed and when it is done, the servo power turned on. The next step will initiate the select tool command, but the following rung will zero out the startup step because the system state is idle. This will prematurely disable the select tool rung and cause a program lockup when the set frame shift is commanded in the other routine. So the solution to this lockup is to delete this branch and make it wait for startup step number 60. There is a place in the MLX tag array to check the status of all of the system state commands. 
under the MOX internal data write packet signals, the status of each system state command can be observed. If there are two on at the same time, that means there's an issue. This will give you some guidelines on which commands to investigate in the program to determine why both of these AOIs have been commanded at the same time. I hope this training video on MLS 300 Advanced Debugging will be very beneficial to you and your future MLS 300 applications.